everyone, I am Shikaina Aquino Maranga and today I am going to perform IV cannulation return demonstration. A procedure where a thin flexible tube called a catheter is inserted into the patient's vein to provide a direct access to their bloodstream. This allows for the administration of medications, fluids, blood products, and other therapeutic substances. To perform this procedure, the first thing I'm going to do is to verify the doctor's order for IV therapy, check the IV fluid prepared, and other things needed. This is done to ensure that I am going to perform the right procedure to the right patient and that that patient um, should receive the right fluid type, the correct volume, and concentration. Next, I am going to show you the equipment that I'm going to use later. I have here a 70% alcohol cotton balls. I have my gauge 22 IV cannula. I also have a heparin cap. I have my transport tape, my tourniquet, my working gloves, uh, my IV fluid, and a infusion set. An infusion set, okay? So, I'm going to check the doctor's order. Okay. After doing that, I am going to explain the procedure to the patient so that we could gain the patient's cooperation. And then I am going to prepare the necessary equipments needed to conserve time and energy. Now, I since I have here my IV fluid bottle and um, tubing, um, I am going to prepare this first. I am going to spike the IVF, IVF bottle and prime the tubing which maybe i can show you some other time after that i am going to perform hand hygiene to deter the spread of microorganisms i am also going to wear my um working gloves so oh. good morning sir i am shikaina akina maranga your student nurse. can you please tell me your name and birthday please Juan de la Cruz, July 35, 1996. Okay, so sir, today um, we have to start you with an IV line as ordered by your doctor. This is so it is done so that it is much more convenient for you and for your doctor to administer your medications and um, fluids. Okay? Okay. Okay, after explaining the procedure to the patient, now I am going to proceed with selecting the right IV site. So this is done to ensure that um, we avoid complications such as phobitis and um, even dislodgement of the IV cannula later. Okay, sir, so which um, hand do you always use? My right hand. Okay, so because of that, we are going to use your left hand. Okay. okay? So after choosing the right IV site, we are now going to place a tourniquet above the injection site. Okay, sir. This will enhance the visibility of the vein. And then after that, um, we are going to prepare the injection site. Okay, sir, so can you do this? So I am going to clean the site with a cotton ball soap and alcohol. Um, this would prevent infection as we are reducing the number of microbes that is on the patient's skin. Okay, after that, we are going to let it dry for at least um, 30 seconds. And while waiting, I am going to um, feel for the pulse below the tourniquet. Okay, this is done because the tourniquet should um, be tight enough to obstruct the venous flow, but should not be so tight that it would also obstruct the arterial flow. If arterial flow is obstructed, then venous feeling is also inhibited. So I could feel the patient's radial pulse. I'm going to use my right size cannula and I'm going to um, prick the patient's skin. Using the right size cannula would help us prevent um, complications. Using the appropriate IV cannula, pierce skin with needle positioned on a 15 to 30 degree angle. Upon flashback visualization, decrease the angle and advance the catheter and stylet 1 fourth inch into the vein. Position the IV catheter parallel to the skin. Hold stylet stationary and slowly advance the catheter until the hub is 1 millimeter to the puncture site. 
Release the tourniquet. Remove the stylet while applying digital pressure over the catheter with one finger to prevent blood from oozing out. After doing all that, we can now proceed with flushing the IV catheter which is done to prevent blood clots from forming. And then we can anchor the IV catheter in place using transport tapes to prevent dislodgement. And if it is already connected to a tubing, then we can connect or we can loop the tubing. And this provides a more secure um, anchoring of the IV catheter in place. and. We can use splint if needed to um, prevent the patient from um, any unnecessary movements that could dislodge the IV catheter. After that, we can now regulate the flow of um, the infusion of the fluid. This is done to ensure that the patient would receive only the right amount of fluid as prescribed by the doctor. Next, we'll have to place a label near the IV site that would indicate the date of insertion, the type, and um, the gauge of the IV catheter used. This is to ensure that um, we know when we should um, replace the IV catheter used. Next, we should also place a label on the IV tubing to indicate the date of when the tubing should also be replaced. Next, we'll have to observe the patient for a couple of minutes for any untoward effects so that we can provide prompt treatment if um, it is needed. And then we are going to document the procedure done. And lastly, perform aftercare of the equipment to promote a safe and clean healthcare environment. That's all for today's video. Please like, share, subscribe. Thank you.